Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, June 7th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. There's still no update regarding a patch for the MS, MSDT vulnerability, aka Folina. Uh, various organizations have spotted exploit documents as a follow up to yesterday's diary where Didi explained how to analyze an MS, MSDT exploit sample. Didi today uh, went into more detail on how to use his Oli dump tool and the CLSID plugin to analyze these types of documents. Using these tools and a new, as he calls it, work in progress module, DDA created to extract data from all these streams. Using these tools, it is relatively straightforward to extract any URLs. And of course, that's how you then get with these documents uh, to uh, the actual uh, malicious part that's downloaded as part of uh, this uh, template. So with no patch available, more and more exploits being cited in the wild. I hope you'll find these tools useful if you run into a suspect document to possibly figure out what they're trying to accomplish. And cloud security company CloudSec has a nice write-up on a newer phishing campaign that heavily relies on URL shorteners and reverse proxy services. This is sort of a trend that has really been uh, ramping up uh, this last year. Have seen a couple of examples too. And the tricky part here is that the attacker basically will use a URL shortener to point you to some service like NCROC or one of these sort of developer centric uh, proxy services and then point that proxy to the actual phishing site. The disadvantage for the defender here, of course, is that first of all, uh, now you're in the case of compromise, change all the times, uh, usually sort of with a 24 hour rhythm, these URLs change. Also, it becomes much more difficult to get to the actual phishing site that's now hidden behind these uh, proxies. And well, uh, users of the open source uh, webmail system Hort, uh, they should be aware of a new and so far unpatched vulnerability that may lead to code execution on the server. Now, initially, it doesn't really sound that bad. It's code execution on the server. That's, of course, bad, but it requires authentication. Where it gets even worse than that is that uh, this particular vulnerability, it's a simple GET request. Uh, it can be exploited via cross-site request forgery. So uh, the only thing the attacker has to do is send you an email with of course, via Horda, via uh, the webmail system. Once you're opening uh, the email, then that cross-site request forgery is being exploited and arbitrary code is run on the server using the credentials that uh, the user used to uh, view the email. And in addition, those credentials can also then be exfiltrated to the attacker. So then, of course, the attacker has credentials and is able to then exploit this vulnerability at will without relying on the victim to open any more emails. The patch was disclosed now by Sonar Source. They did notify Hort February 2nd. The timeline actually doesn't really mention any real acknowledgement or such uh, from Horde. Now, since then, they have released, like Horde has released other security updates. So it's definitely still actively maintained. Security uh, bugs are being fixed, but uh, this one hasn't fixed yet. And Sonar Source has this, uh, these days, somewhat typical 90-day uh, disclosure policy. And Click Studio, an Australian company that makes enterprise secret servers, which basically are uh, servers that don't just manage passwords, but also things like API keys and the like, basically a password manager for an enterprise. It's run on site. Well, apparently they lost track of one of the secret keys they're using to sign their software. And our virus vendors have discovered uh, samples of the Folina exploit uh, 
documents that were signed using a Click Studio's uh, certificate. Click Studio now has uh, revoked that certificate. They don't really say where the certificate was stolen and apparently that's not really clear. However, April last year, uh, Click Studio did have a breach, which was actually back then used uh, to push malware to customers. So the attacker back then was able to breach uh, the entire software development process of Click Studio and was able to publish malicious versions uh, of their software that was then automatically download as part of the update process by Click Studio customers. So of course, best guess at this point is that as part of the breach back then a year ago, that uh, these uh, keys were leaked as well. Well, and that's it for today. Of course, I'm here in San Francisco for RSA. I will be at the Sands booth uh, tomorrow or uh, today, Tuesday uh, afternoon uh, to do some live streaming. And then, of course, I'll be part of the Sands panel on Wednesday around noon. Well, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.